Hi guys, this is Pradeep. So in my previous video, I created the asset master. Now I will use that particular asset master for my transaction. So as I said, I will purchase one asset and there are two different way of purchasing the asset master. Uh, sorry, uh, two different way that uh, we, we can purchase the particular asset. One is through finance and one is through logistic. I will show you both options. So in this particular video, let's purchase the asset through finance. And this is transaction, asset acquisition externally. That means from vendor we are going to purchase the asset. But as I said, here I will use the FI system. That means logistic will not be involved and uh, we will post the particular asset. The transaction code for that asset acquisition will be F-90. So go to accounting, then go to financial accounting, then go to fixed asset. Now, last time we have created the asset master. This time we will go to posting and acquisition. External acquisition with vendor. So you can see one more option is also there, ABZOM, but that I will show you in another video. In this video, we will see how to purchase the asset from vendor. So what will be the accounting entry here when we are going to purchase the asset from vendor? Obviously accounting point of view. So vendor is going to credit as we are going to pay, vendor means payable. So payable is going to credit and asset is going to debit. But this is the after reconciliation entry, right? So uh, here uh, when we are going to purchase, like mostly you will find that purchase activity will be handled by the purchase team, the logistic team and it is integrated with the finance. But in this particular transaction, logistic will not be involved. So I'm going to directly post the accounting entry system. So aut automatically earlier in the old system, there was some manual reconciliation process was there. But now it is as we are using S4. So you will find that automatically I will show you two reports. So one report is related to asset. Another report is related to GL. So when we will prepare the balance sheet, in balance sheet, we are not going to take the particular asset. We have, let's say, hundreds of machines are there. So in balance sheet, we are going to take the consolidated figure. So that is known as your reconciliation balance or reconciliation account related to that particular asset. So mostly when you are working on R to R team, so that time, some people, they will involve in the reconciliation or they will prepare the profit and loss balance sheet. For them, that balance is important. And the entry level staff or the users, they are working on the data entry part. So for them, this particular transaction is important. So automatically, once I will post the transaction, I will show you both reconciliation part as well as asset report. So let's check that. So I'm going to use this particular transaction code F-90. So this is my document and uh, here I will take the date. So let's take the document date. I'm just taking today's date. Right, so all the information as per my configuration it is showing. So what we are going to purchase reference, so we will take here as machine we are purchasing. So 31 posting key, as you know, that vendor is going to credit. So I will select here the vendor, supplier. Continue. So let's say asset cost is 12,000 and we will also calculate the tax related to this invoice or related to this purchase, right? So if you want, you can also add the business area. Let's add that too, right? So this is my line one. So where we are going to credit the vendor. And before this, you must have idea about the posting key. So 31 is vendor credit. Now coming to the debit entry, that is your posting key 70. And here we are going to enter that sub ledger. So sub ledger means that asset master, whatever I have created and asset master was 1004 and we will select here transaction type external purchase. So it is my line two, which we are going to debit the asset. You can see debit asset transaction uh, posting key 70 and the amount credit amount and add here the tax code. That's it. Now check the, uh, you can simulate the voucher, right? Now let's see the profit centers and all everything is properly coming or not because I have created one profit center there. So I can see profit center is there related to this uh, particular transaction F001, I can see related to asset. But when, once I will go to the report, you will find more detailed way, right? So post it. 
Now you can see one document generated, document number 19005. This is my operation document. This is my vendor invoice. Now with this posting, you will find one payable line. So before coming to the asset document, let me show you the payable line or your vendor payable item. Now this one is not related to R2R. This is related to your uh, uh, payment part. That means already we procured something. So now the finance team related to payment or your payable team, they are going to make the vendor payment in their procedure as per their procedure. So just have a look into this one as we purchase the asset. So that should be a payable entry related to the vendor. But this, in this series, this is not our area of concern. So just I am showing here that payable item should be there. So 12,000 it is updated. Now let's close it. Now basically what I'm looking here with this transaction, I want to see what is my asset report and whether it is properly reconciled with my GL or not. So when we will prepare the balance sheet, what balance we are going to take into our balance sheet. So we have one report is there, which you are in domain, you are saying that asset register. In SAP, we are saying that it is asset explorer. Now if I will go to asset explorer, now this is, I'm checking the reporting part. So I posted the transaction, now I'm, I'm going to check the report. So here you can see one uh, under this asset, you will find one transaction code AW01N. So this is nothing but your asset register you can say or asset explorer you can say. Now check it. So related to asset number 1004, I can see that some balance is updated. So uh, 12,000 includes, that is the invoice amount, but 12,000 includes some tax. So that is why actual asset value, it is our inclusive. So tax inclusive depends on the configuration. It can be exclusive also. In this particular transaction, I have shown inclusive. Next one, I will show you exclusive. So my asset value is 11,428.57 and related to that asset, all informations I can see here. So this particular asset was purchased from which vendor? This is the vendor. Now it is linked with a cost center. So this cost center that time I have linked in master data. So because of that, it is there. It is also linked with one profit center. So that is also available here. And right now it's showing that proposed depreciation and what is the depreciation value for this year? Actually it is like last period of this year. I'm using April to March reporting. So proposed depreciation, it's showing that 40, uh, 40.59. Uh, now being a user, I'm not going to do anything automatically because of configuration, all the informations are readily available and this data we are going to use in our reporting point of view. This is the beauty of any uh, best ERP system. Now here, if I need some more information, so I can see here, if I will go to the comparison, you can see as per my different depreciation methods, as I created multiple depreciation methods, so different values I'm, come, I'm getting here. For 2023, this is your depreciation because we purchased the asset in the last period. So next year onwards, you can see in this, I created straight line method as depreciation calculation. So you can see fixed value year wise, it is available. If I will change my depreciation method here, or depreciation area, you can see the depreciation amount changed because here I have maintained a different depreciation calculation method, different rate, then accordingly uh, values are coming. And for your reference here, I have maintained written down value method. So accordingly the values you can see keep on decreasing. Here also I have tax point of view, I have maintained one, some settings automatically that information also I'm getting, I'm getting here. So without doing anything, once the user is going to post a transaction, so automatically all the informations are readily available. So that means major work you can see handled by the consultant. That means the person who is going to do the development. So that's why I always say that user point of view, it is very easy to get into the particular job. So first you get into the user role. Then if you like this particular career or let's say you are thinking I will upgrade myself, then go for consulting. So by that time you have a good knowledge on the different business process. Right now, this is the data related to asset related informations. Now I want to see the information related to the reconciliation account. So what is the reconciliation account? Even here also you will get the reconciliation account. So reconciliation account is 4,000. Now let's check that report. Now I'm going to check my GL report. And this is the transaction code. GL account is 4,000. Now. Uh, this particular asset balance is something it is updated here, right? So this is my asset balance. This is my asset balance. But when I will check my reconciliation account and if I will select here all item, you can see here this balance is something different. It is 48,780. It's because multiple transactions are there. It is not related to only one asset. Now this balance we are going to put in the balance sheet 
or when we'll pre we will take the value from the trial balance. So this one, so it is combination of so many transactions, so many different subledgers or so many different assets. So now you got the idea difference uh, between the this report, this is a particular asset. So this is our hitting machine and what is the cost related to hitting machine, what will be the depreciation and any information related to this particular asset. But when I'm going to check this report, this is not related to only one asset, it is my GL balance. So this is my reconciliation account and I just named this one as APC machine account. So this balance is going to be part of your balance sheet. This one is there in any asset report. So in this particular video, we have seen how to purchase the asset from the finance point of view. In next video, we will see how to purchase the asset from the logistic point of view.